In this episode of Quarantine Darkroom, we're going to look at developing ECN2 film, also known as cinema film, at home in a small space, in my case a kitchen sink, using the QWD Quiet We're Dreaming Labs uh, home developing kit. We're going to talk a little bit about that while I do the process. I'm going to try to keep this snappy. Uh, I'll show you how I do the multiple temperatures. As far as home processing goes, ECN2 is a little trickier than C41 and maybe sometimes black and white depending on what you do. I have figured out a way to deal with the multiple temperatures. When you're developing film, usually you only have to keep one temperature throughout the whole process. What I mainly want to do is show how I control the temperature in this process. So I'm going to set up now and let my chemicals get up to temperature when I'm loading film, so I better get started. See you in a minute. What I basically use for this is a plastic tub. It's also similar to the standard sous vide bin. Same idea, but with the temperature control system from Cinestill. And I also use a smaller tub uh, that you see to the left of the sink for my cooler temperatures. So it effectively gives me three baths when I combine it with a little bucket from a lunch kit. This is all very low budget stuff. So the bucket for the lunch kit acts as an insulator in the main water bath, taking down the water in the thing just a few degrees. This idea from the old camera guy, which is all you need between the developer and the fixer. And what I do in here, oh yeah, you'll want a funnel and a pitcher, at least one. I try to get this running nice and hot. It's really probably too hot right now, as you can cool things down a lot more easily than you can heating them up. So I pour it into that. All I have to do is take a standard darkroom tray and just place it over top, and that traps the heat in. For temperature checks, 91, 93. TCS 1000 is at proper temperature now fix is what I need to see. So the fix is a little uh, cool probably still. And that's fine. Now see, now we're at basically at temperature here. This is at temperature. Are these other 80 to 100 degree things um, at temperature? The tricky part is not getting the two things that you can get 80 to 100 degrees. The tricky thing is, is you no, know, the thing that has to be at 80, which is the bleach at the proper temp. And so I just kinda, see this is a little cool. This, however, um, this stuff is pretty close. Get this to stay around 80, okay. This is an insulating tub, but it's mostly just a few degrees hotter and you can control that by adding just a little bit of cooler water here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to let this heat up and I'm going to load film, which buys me time to let it heat up. See, it's totally frozen. It's a Canon uh, EOS M1. Actually, I filmed my first vlog on it, the very first one. I'm on episode, this is 91 now, wow. I'm closing out on 100, uh, which brings me to the point where if you enjoy stuff like this and you want kind of this mixture of analog and digital, click on subscribe, turn on notifications. Uh, comment, watch my playlist, it's quarantine viewing, and I hope you actually get something out of it too, because I really enjoy doing this, and I've just gone over a thousand subscribers. I need to hit 4,000 watch hours to get monetized, and I'm uh, within 1,000, so the more you help watch, I hope I can help you watch, uh, you know, the faster I can make money off of this, because as I told you last week, I'm jobless now, so it would be greatly appreciated. This is going temperature-wise real quick. You want to check multiple spots too, really, because you can't trust that it's going to read accurately just off of one area. I've got my Patterson tank filled with a roll of Vision 3 50D and a roll of Lomography 120 um, Color 400. I'm cross-processing Color 400, and of course this is cinema film with Rimjet. The thing is to note that um, you have some color shifts when you cross-process. Other colors, I, which is why I cross-process, other colors behave in a way that you don't see with standard C41 chemicals, and the main difference is CD4 versus CD3, the color developer. I really like how it renders the colors. If you're shooting on white backgrounds or you need 
complete color accuracy, you do not do this, but for everything else, it's a really nice interpretation if you ask me. I really love how it looks with Color Plus. I like my first attempts with uh, Fuji Superior Extra 400. This is my first roll of Lomography Color 400 ever. I like Lomography's backing paper. A good way of looking at things. It's reading a little warm, which is good. I want to get the pre-bath just a little bit better and the bleach is right around where it needs to be. We don't want it to get be much cooler than this though, so I'd rather run a little more hot water in here. Pre-bath is now a little hot, so I'm going to stand it up. Bleach um, is good, and the stop bath is good. White We're Dreaming has uh, these nice laminated cards. I'm Kind of shuffle this around should be an actual 100 this should be hopefully close enough to 80 yeah when you tip it over it should be good okay so normally you do a pre-soak for uh for c41 and black and white or i do at least so what you do is this pre-bath it's an alkaline i believe pre-bath and what it does is Leave it in for 10 seconds. It's in there basically right away. You don't even have to agitate this. So you pour it back out. I try to put this back out of the way. What you do now is get your water 80 to 100 degrees. Fill this up. Keep an eye on it so it doesn't get out of hand. Okay, let it drain down. Get that lid on really good and then you shake the devil out of it and you'll notice it comes out very okay so that's two now it's coming out kind of magenta holding at 100 good and that should be just fine so what we've got now is three minutes of developer and make sure it says developer on it if you haven't memorized the colors and sometimes these things have a tendency to change so start It's just vinegar and water mixed. And you'll see what a disaster I am in the sink. Okay, so it's stopped. You pour that back. Bleach. Which hopefully is still at a good temperature, but whatever. This is nasty stuff. This is another foamy one that you want to be very mindful of the last drops. Yummy. And this is the fixer. And So now you can run the water between 80 and 100. You don't want to shock it or anything like I just did. You'll notice that the rail's not black. There is definitely going to be rim jet on it, as you can see. Photo flow. So, um, what I do 
So you don't pinch the middle. Don't pinch the middle when you do this. You'll see some icky rim jet. You just kind of flip it around. Make sure that all the, all the peck pad is soaked because I don't want anything to like cause undue rubbing. So one last time through. Okay, it came out pretty clean. So you get your uh, weight and put it on the bottom of that roll. So this is gonna photo flow this. And here you go. Um, the ramjet should be clear now. Uh, you can clean it a little bit after if it's not. And of course I have to clean up now, so uh, I better get to that because recording this is like a total mess and uh, way harder than just... Thanks for watching, I hope that helped and feel free to ask any questions. I will see you next week. That has, you know, some a limited shelf life anyway, maybe like 24 rolls or something like that, depending on how you, how you roll, pun intended. Ask 